Let's learn about meiosis. What is meiosis? It is the process in which the division of cells takes place. The division of the special type of cells that are known as germ cells, they are divided by this process. At the end of the meiosis, there is the production of four daughter cells that are haploid cells, which means that they will contain the half number of chromosomes as compared to their parent cells. In this process, there is the transfer of genetic information from parent to the offspring takes place. To understand the complete mechanism of meiosis, it is divided into two stages, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. In meiosis 1, is also known as reduction stage, in which one parent cell gave rise to two daughter cells. It is known as reduction because the number of chromosomes are reduced from 46 to 23. As the parent cell contains the 46 number of chromosomes, so the daughter cells will contain the half number of chromosomes as compared to that of the parent cell. So the parent cell contains the 46 chromosome and each daughter cell will contain the 23, 23 number of chromosomes, which is half of that of the parent cell. Meiosis 1 is followed by meiosis 2, which is also known as division phase. As in meiosis 1, the number of chromosomes are already halved. So meiosis 2, only a division of cells will take place. Each daughter cell will give rise to two daughter cells. So at the end of meiosis 2, there will be four daughter cells each will contain the same number of chromosomes, that is 23, which is the half of that of the parent cell. As I already explained, meiosis is divided into two stages, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Let's see here again what happens in meiosis 1, as in meiosis 1 is the reduction phase in which, which means that the number of chromosomes are reduced from 46 to 23, as one parent cell gives rise to Two daughter cells each contains the half number of chromosomes as compared to that of the parent cell, 23 and 23. Here is the example what actually happens in meiosis 1 as the chromosomes in the human body are arranged in the form of homologous pairs. As these are the sets of chromosomes, these are the 46 chromosomes as the human body contains one cell contains the 46 number of chromosomes and if they are present in pairs, we say that there are 23 pairs of chromosomes, that they are always present in pair, one from one come from the father and one come from the mother. We say that one, sets, one chromosome is the maternal chromosome and other is the fraternal chromosome. So that's why it makes the homologous chromosomes. They are present in the form of homologous chromosomes. These chromosomes are same in size and same genes are present on each chromosome. So these 46 chromosomes, or we say that 23 pair of chromosomes, these are the homologous chromosomes. In meiosis 1, these pair of or these homologous chromosomes actually separate from each other. That's the one, the parental, and the other is the maternal. So these one come from the father, other from the mother. So these independently separate from each other so 23 sets of chromosome goes to one cell and 23 chromosomes go to the other cell so that's how these homologous pairs are separated from each other so this movement of chromosomes or separation of chromosomes from each other these are random that's in some cells it will uh, they will be moving the uh, fraternal like father chromosomes and in some cells there will be moving the maternal chromosomes so here the recombination or we say that independent assortment also occurs that there are the mixing of genes because of the movement of chromosomes randomly for into the one cell and to the other cells and these homologous chromosomes are separated from each other as the meiosis one is followed by meiosis two what happens with meiosis 2? Meiosis 2 is also known as the division phase in which the simply the chromosomes are separated or divided. The chromosomes, there are 23 chromosomes in each cell, so which, which means that 23 chromosomes will be having 46 chromatids and these chromatid separation takes place and each cell will contain 23 chromatids and 23 chromatids, which means that 23 chromosomes and 23 chromosomes. What actually happens in meiosis 2? That in meiosis 1, one parent cell gives rise to two daughter cells, then each daughter cell 
it contains the 23 chromosome one cell contains the 23 chromosome and the other cell contains the 23 chromosomes which were before homologous chromosomes and they were separated in meiosis one now as you can see here these chromosomes contains the chromatids these are the sister chromatids to each other and these are attached to each other through centromere so in meiosis two simply these sister chromatids are separated and move towards the opposite poles so these 23 chromosomes these can each chromosome contains two sister chromatids so 23 chromosomes it will contains the total number of 46 chromatids so 23 sister chromatids will move to the one cell and then 23 sister chromatids will move to the other cell so that's how they will contain 23 and 23 so there are there were two cells formation in meiosis one so in meiosis two each one will give rise to two daughter cells so at the end of meiosis two there will be total number of four daughter cells which contains the 23 and 23 number of chromosomes which were actually the sister chromatids separated by the chromosome separation as the chromosomes their sister chromatids were separated and 23 moves to the one cell and 23 moves to the other cell why we need meiosis meiosis is needed for the production of germline cells such as gametes production for the production of eggs and sperm cells as the egg cells production takes place in the ovaries and the process is known as oogenesis while the production of sperms takes place in males in testes and the process is known as spermatogenesis so the process of oogenesis and spermatogenesis it follows the process of meiosis for the formation of gametes eggs and sperm cells they need the number of chromosomes which must be half as compared to that of the parent cell as the parent cell contains the 46 number of chromosome so each gametes must contain the half number like 23 and 23 number of chromosomes as 23 number of chromosomes comes from the mother and 23 number of chromosomes comes from the father and then they collectively make up the diplite chromosomes as these half number of chromosomes 23 chromosomes from egg cells and 23 from sperm cells they together form the diploid cells which contains the 46 number of chromosomes and that make up the normal human being so haploid cells like egg cells and sperm cells these 23 and 23 half number of chromosomes these are produced by the process of meiosis then during fertilization when they are fused together they form the zygote formation these two combine together 23 and 23 they make up the diploid zygote which makes up the 46 number of chromosomes and that makes the human life possible as the production of these haploid gametes takes place through meiosis meiosis it reduces the number of chromosomes by half and fertilization then restores these number as for example you can see here if the fertilization of the same number of chromosomes takes place like if they are not get half by meiosis and their only mitosis occurs the mother cell will contains the 46 number of chromosomes and the father cells will contain the 46 number of chromosome then the child will be having 46 and 46 there will be too much chromosomes that is not possible for the formation of a life so that's why meiosis reduces the genetic content into half so 23 number of chromosomes comes from the mother and 23 number of chromosomes comes from the father that makes the correct number of chromosomes that is 46 or we say that 23 pairs of chromosomes that's why the life is possible because this is the right number of chromosomes that makes up the human body what is the significance of meiosis as we have seen that meiosis has three important reasons why meiosis must take place in some specific type of cells as they are involved in the reduction of cells of chromosomes from diploid to haploid so that's why the survival is possible that these haploid cells during sexual reproduction they will give rise to the diploid organisms it also enables the genetic diversity as we have seen that genetic diversity how through genetic recombination in the process one 
and also the random assortment of chromosomes in the meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 and also aids in the repair of genetic defects if there is any genetic defect present they will be removed through recombination genetic recombination of alleles or sister chromatids let's see in detail first of all the first significance of meiosis is it allows the sexual reproduction of diploid organisms how as it is involved in the reduction of chromosome numbers as 23 comes from the mother and 23 comes from the father and these haploid then together form the diploid zygot that is responsible for the development and formation of organism and once the zygote formation takes place then after that the cells undergoes mitosis for the development of fetus the second significance of meiosis is that it enables genetic diversity as how it enables the genetic diversity through crossing over and recombination of chromosomes as it was takes place in the prophase one of the meiosis one as you can see here these are the different genes as labeled here so when the crossing over takes place it exchanges their genetic part and at the end of meiosis two we get the four different as shown here are the four but we get the 23 23 and 23 different chromosomes with having the different recombination of genes so that's why all the humans are different from each other and they have different traits from each other because of these genetic recombinations if this genetic recombination does not take place the survival of the organism would be difficult as what is the significance of these recombinations the genetic diversity means that there will be certain individuals with any given population that will be able to better survive and they will be able to survive for food availability and they will be able to resist the weather patterns and diseases and other species and they will be responsible for the species continuity so these have the significance of these recombination genetic diversity the other one is they are involved in the repair of genetic defects that in case if there is some defect in the genes then through recombination as this was occurred in the process one of the meiosis one the genetic as if in case the genetic uh, disease or there occurs then these genetic defects will be replaced by these recombination process so that's why it will allow the healthy offsprings the recombination which occurs in meiosis can be further helpful in repair of the genetic defects in the next generation if a genetic defect is present in a certain allele of one parent, recombination can replace this allele with a healthy allele of the other parent, allowing for healthy offspring. So if there is any genetic defect, it can be replaced through recombination and maybe this cell will fuse into the zygote formation and it will be responsible for the healthy offspring. So there is also this is also the significance of meiosis. So overview of meiosis, we have stated that meiosis in which the genetic information from the parents to the offspring is transferred through the process of gametogenesis and the germline cells are produced by the process of meiosis because we need the half number of chromosomes. So they were divided into two phases, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Meiosis 1 is known as a reduction in which actually the number of chromosomes are reduced from 46 to 23 as the homologous chromosomes they were known as diploid and from diploid they are converted into haploid and then meiosis 2 only the separation of the sister chromatid occurs and that's why the number of chromosomes are 23 23 and 23 that is same as the, at the end of the cells that were formed meiosis 1 but they are half the number as compared to their original parent cell Let's learn about the phases of meiosis in detail. Uh, meiosis is divided into two stages, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Each stage has further phases. As the meiosis 1, so all the phases will be given with 1, prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, and telophase 1. While meiosis 2, they will be labeled with 2. So meiosis 2 has prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2 and telophase 2 let's start with the first stage of meiosis that is the meiosis. if you were able to understand don't forget to watch other videos